In this video, we will take a deeper look at the discrete energy levels in the Bohr model of hydrogen, and we will see how angular momentum is quantized in this model. The electron in a hydrogen atom can only exist in discrete energy levels. When undisturbed, the electron occupies the lowest energy state known as the ground state. This energy state is denoted with n equals 1 and has an energy of negative 13.6 electron volts. There are also higher energy levels where n equals 2 represents the first excited state, n equals 3 represents the second excited state, and so on. The total energy at each level in electron volts can be calculated by the following formula, where n represents the principal quantum number. So for n equals 2, the first excited state will have an energy of negative 3.4 electron volts and energies in the other excited states can be calculated similarly. The energies obtained from this formula correspond with those that can be calculated using the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of the electrons, and strictly defined radii corresponding to the energy level. We will discuss these radii on the next slide. Also in the Bohr model, the electron is able to transition between energy levels. To transition from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, the electron must absorb a photon with an energy exactly equal to the difference in energy between the two levels. On the other hand, an electron transitioning from a higher energy level to a lower energy level will emit a photon with an energy exactly equal to the difference in energy between the two levels. All transitions down to the ground state have high energy and will produce photons of ultraviolet radiation. The next set of transitions down to the level n equals 2 will produce photons of visible light. Then transitions down to the level n equals 3 result in photons of lower energy infrared radiation. The energy levels in Bohr's model are modelled as circular orbits around the nucleus. Bohr also proposed that only specific orbits are possible around the hydrogen atom. In these orbits, the angular momentum of an electron in an energy level, given by the product of the linear momentum, mv, and the radius of its orbit, r, is quantized in integer multiples of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, represented by the following equation from the data booklet. To derive this, we can use de Broglie's picture of electrons where electrons have wave-like properties. We usually visualize an electron moving in a circular path around the nucleus. But since electrons are bound to orbits, an integer number of its wavelength must fit along this orbit, similar to a standing wave on a string. So we can think of this as bending the string into a closed circle and imagining the standing wave wrapped around the circle. Then the allowed orbits are the orbits where an electron can constructively interfere with itself. The following two diagrams show these wavelengths for the n equals 2 and n equals 3 orbits. More precisely, the circumference of the orbit, given by 2 pi multiplied by the radius r, must be equal to an integer number of the electron's wavelength, n lambda. The de Broglie wavelength of a particle is given by the Planck constant divided by the particle's momentum and the momentum is given by the particle's rest mass multiplied by its velocity. So we can make these substitutions into this expression. By rearranging the angular momentum, we arrive at the result above, which is known as the Bohr condition. And so we have shown that treating an electron as a wave leads to the quantization of the electron's angular momentum. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. We saw that energy levels in the Bohr model of hydrogen could be predicted by the following equation. The existence of these definite energies showed that angular momentum can be quantized in integer multiples of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. This now concludes our video on the Bohr model. Thank you for watching.